Let's quickly go into the word of God. I want you to take your pen and paper. I'll be brief, but I'm sharing on a theme that I, 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 I have meditated upon. I said it's important we reflect on it. And I've titled it, The Three T's in Life. The Three T's in Life. Everybody, when you are walking on the journey of life, there is three. These three T's are assigned for you to understand them and know how to model yourself through it. Amen. Reading from the book of Job chapter number one. Job one. And I will read it quick because I've, given, I've been given a limited time to preach. Job chapter one. If you are there, you can just read for me. Other than that, I'll just go. Glory to God. The Bible says, there was a man. Now, let me read from verse 13. Now, there was a day when uh, his sons, and I'm talking about Job, his sons and daughters were, were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And, and the messenger came to Job and said, the, the oxen were playing or were plowing and the donkeys feeding and um, feeding beside them. When the Siberians, um, when the Siberians, let me wear my glasses. When the Siberians, when the Siberians raided them and took them away, indeed they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword and, and I alone have escaped to come to tell you. Why he was still speaking, and I want you to underline why he was still speaking and I alone came. Hallelujah. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and I alone have escaped to tell you. 17. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, the Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them away. Yes, they killed the servants with the edge of the sword and I alone have escaped to tell you. 18. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their older brother's house and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the, on, on the, on the young people and they are dead. I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe and shaped his head and he fell to the ground and worshipped. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord had gave and the Lord has taken away. Bless me. The name of the Lord. Ask your neighbor, if it were you, what would you do? Oh, ask somebody for me. Ask your neighbor, if it were you, what would you do? Hallelujah. Oh, you are not asking the person. Ask them, if it were you, what would you do? James chapter 1. And I'm reading verse 2, verse 2 to 4. James 1, 2 to 4. Let's hear the word of God. James 1, 2 to 4. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Another verse says, diverse temptations. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Ecclesiastes chapter number three, verse one, forward, and I read. Ecclesiastes chapter three, from verse one, going. To, every to everything, there is a season, 
a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck what is planted, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance, a, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time, a time to tear and a time to sue. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time, to, a time of war and a time of peace. Hallelujah. Oh, I said hallelujah. Amen. What profit has the worker for that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in his time. Also, he has put eternity in their heart, except that no one can find out what work that God does from the beginning to the end. The Lord bless his word and cause his word to bless us. Amen. I'm talking to you about the three T's in life. Jehovah God has put eternity in the heart of every man. So whilst you are born, there is eternity inside of your heart. Except that no one can tell or find out the work God does from the beginning to the end. That one is hidden. But in him, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Now time is a component quantity or quantity of various measurement used to sequence events. That is time. Time is used to sequence events. So when we're reading Job chapter 1, it says, and then and, and another one came. So it was sequence of events. And when you read it, the whole thing happened one day. That's why I said, ask your neighbor, if it were you, what would you do? Amen. You lost your job. You lost your business. You lost your friends. You lost your wife. And so many things. Happened one day. But the Bible said when he, had, he, he listened to them, watched the sequence of events, and when he has finished, he bowed and worshiped God. In our time, it's not easy. Amen? In our time, it is not what easy. But Job understood one thing. He said, take it all. I know naked I came, and I will return naked. One thing that I know, take Take my, take what I have, but leave my God inside of me. Because he said to, the Lord said to Satan, touch not what is inside of him, because that is me. The image he carries is me. And so that one touch not. You can touch their possessions, you can touch this. This morning I was, I was, in, a, I was in a bath, and the Lord began to take me somewhere, explaining certain things to me. He said, son, do you know that... I employed you before your employers employed you. I said, how God? He said, do you know you are my worker in my house? Everybody, every one of us, you are a worker of God in his house. And the Lord employed you before your employer employed you. And so if there's anyone you need to hold in respect and high esteem, it is God. It is God. The Lord married you before you married your wife or your husband. The Lord married you. Because when you were in, in your mother's womb, he said, I knew you and I ordained you. I, I, sent, I ordained you as a prophet. Hallelujah. The Lord educated you before you went to school. The money you have, God has already made you rich before you got that money. And so it doesn't make a difference when it comes to God looking at you and the things you have. Sometimes we become so proud and so arrived and thinking that that is all us because we have what other people don't have. So we're thinking we are better. But let me tell you, before you got better, God has already bettered you. And so nothing of you surprises God. Hallelujah. Sometimes we do a prayer, Father, bless me to surprise this one. Hey, he has already blessed you and you are a surprise. He says, you are a sign and a wonder. What again do you want? Hallelujah. And so time measures sequence of events. It compares the durations of events and the intervals between them. The time we have 
simply measures them. And so you can think of tomorrow, you can think of yesterday, you can think of today. They are all sequence of events. And time is the one, it's a commodity or the quantity that measures all of these things. Say amen. amen. Or say amen to that. And so because of time, we are able to measure our past. We are able to measure our now. And we are able to measure our future because of time. In everyday life of us, we are probably most familiar with time from two sources. One source is the time you carry. So what's the time? What time is it? And then you are moving and walking and living your, your life based on time. He said, time is not on my side. I don't even have time. Glory to God. Because we are, we, it's obvious that your life is measured by time. And so once you know that you can be late to work, so you can be late to heaven. If you can be late for an appointment, if you are not careful, you can be late for the appointment of God. Hallelujah. Clocks. Clocks are one of the sources. And our inner psychological experience of time is also one of the, 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 the way we can, we can measure our time. Amen. But today I want to talk to you about three important times in the work life of a believer. Not an unbeliever. Hallelujah, a believer. Three important times in the work life of, an unbel- of a believer. Number one time that we can talk of is trying times or trial times. I said three T's in life, isn't it? We have the trial time or trials time or trying time. That's one. Number two, we have the temptation time. Temptation time. And number three, we have the testing time. Every believer, you you experience this series of times, which are psychological. We measure it, our inner thing. It's something that is what? It's with us. And time helps you to measure yourself based on that. Or put yourself on the scale and see where you stand. Amen. Let's take the first one, the trial times. The trial times. These are the times when things are not going well for you in life. Trial times. When the going become tough. There are the times when everything you do do not seem to work for you or produce any desired results. When you feel like your life is going downhill, that is the trial time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you, encounter, when you encounter various forms of attack from the pit of hell. Example, when sickness are knocking at your door, afflictions and infirmity are just entering without invitation. Loss of relationship, wayward child or children, pain, when you lose your job, hurts, betrayal, that is the time of struggle, setbacks, as a believer, disappointment. Repeated failures, rejections, mockery, and so on. These are the times we call tough times, trial times. And every believer, you go through this time one way or the other in your work with God. You will experience them. They will come without inviting them. They will happen without any invitation. You want things to happen fast for you, but delay said, here I am. You want to move life forward, but set back said, here I am. You really want things that you have fasted, you have prayed, you have done everything, but seem, nothing seems to move. You see wind blowing, but you only see the back of the wind. People are, 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 are doing well in your eyes, and sometimes you look at them and say, I have failed. You sit in the same classroom, in the same year, taught the same thing, you wrote the exams, you failed. Others passed. Hallelujah. And you look at yourself and say, I have failed. Trial times. A believer. A believer. You have paid your tithe. You are given your offering. Everything you have done. You have lived a clean life. I mean, a, a godly life for the Lord. But nothing seemed to work for you. Amen. And sometimes people look at you and they mock at you. So it is a season or time we call mockery time. 
people look down upon you. People you don't even expect to reject you, they do reject you. You go through series of rejection, trial times. It looks as if God is silent, but he's in the working business. Amen. During these times, you easily become agitated. You easily become annoyed. Sometimes, that nobody has done you anything. You wake up in the house, you are upset with your wife or your husband, and you begin to speak anyhow. You are in your trial time. Amen. And so any time from today, your husband or your wife, stand up today, I told, is it today I told my wife? It's today I told her. She came in. I asked her one question. And the way I look at the face, she responded. I said, something is not right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Tell your husband or your wife, you are in your trial time. Be patient. Difficult time. Hallelujah. Because sometimes people you don't expect to, to disrespect you, they do. And they walk away. You done good for people. When, a, when is your time for them to return their good? They pay you back bad. You support people. You are there for people. But when is your time for them to be there for you? They all desert you. Trial times of a believer. During that time, few people are your friends. People that you have, you can, you give, you desire your heart. If I am blessed, if I get blessed, I will bless these people. In your trial time, they are the people they so test and pain in your life. The life of Joseph, the people that he would have helped, in the, they were the people that sold him when they never understood his dream. Beloved, when you are in your trial time, people don't understand your vision. They don't understand your dream. And they fight against where you are going because they don't understand trial times. You lose patience during this time. You have minimum tolerance. You don't, you can't tolerate, me, I can't tolerate this nonsense. Me, I can't tolerate this thing. Me, I can't tolerate this one. I can't tolerate this one. You've never been able to tolerate, any, tolerate anybody. You are in your trial time. In your trial times, you don't care about others. You only care about yourself. You don't care about your surroundings. What you are doing, you don't know it's affecting somebody. He said, I don't care. In your trial times. Hallelujah. You become afraid. You become anxious. You become sensitive to your emotions. Any little things I'm hurt. Any little things I'm hurt. In trial time, that's where you become vulnerable to challenges. Amen. Oh, I said amen. amen. You lose focus and have minimum awareness and you become prone to mistakes. And so sometimes things you do, you never thought it would lead to mistake. You, get, you find yourself, you have made a mistake. Trial times. Job. The Bible says the enemy one day came. He took everything. He was not satisfied. Because when he had done that, Job went down and worshipped. He went back to God and said, Lord, you have taken, because, because he still have his skin. So let's go to skin to skin. Touch his bone. And let's see if he will still hold on to his, his integrity. The Lord said, go. He touched his skin. And one day, the whole body was soiled with boils. But he still stood on his integrity. I've made a vow. Though he slain me, I will still trust him. Ah, you didn't say amen. You didn't say amen. In your trial times, God is waiting on you. No, you waiting on God. God is waiting to see how well you behave yourself. Character building is done in our trial time. Not in our time we have come out of it. Character building. For you to say, I am a Christian. It's not when things are well for you. It's when things are not going well. That's why God will see the real, the true character of his people. Trial times. Amen. Remember, in your trial times, a trial is what God wants you to go through. I'll say that again. A trial is what God wants you to go through. 
And so in your trial times, remember the love, the mercy of God, the faithfulness of the Lord, and then the goodness of God you have enjoyed in the past and be grateful to him. Yes, things are not working. Yes, things are bad. But remember, yesterday God did you good. And based on that, stand and have faith in him. If he had given you the marriage, he will give you the, 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 the children. If he has given you the children, he will give them destiny. If the Lord has given you hope, he will fulfill it. If he has promised you, he will surely do it. And so in the time of your, of, your, of your trial, remember the love, the mercy, the faithfulness of God and be grateful to God. Hallelujah. Build up your most holy faith in his word. And stay strong in the word of God and in the power of his might. Don't lose hope. Don't give up easily. Don't yield to that which is attracting you to the other side. But stay with God because he's doing something eyes cannot see. Have a character of endurance and let your mind stay on God. In the book of Isaiah 23, verse, 6, verse 3, the Bible, Isaiah 26, verse 3, the Bible says, he will give them perfect faith. He whose mind stays on him. He will give them perfect man, perfect peace. And so stay with God. Learn to maintain good mindset. In your trial times, keep your mindset right. That is not the time to be offended. That is not the time to keep bitterness in you. That is not the time to engage certain things that will weigh you down the more. Because your life is downhill. Anybody that you place on you, you become heavy and you do drop down more and quicker. Hallelujah. In your trial time, you release people who have offended you. Let them go. And just hope in your God. Because he has said a way he does things. So that in its time, it becomes beautiful in your eyes. Two, temptation times. Talking about the three T's in life. The temptation times. Temptation times are opportunity for us to make decisions and take actions that have the ability and the capacity to either destroy us or to build us. i say that again. Temptation time is an opportunity for you, opportunity for me to make decisions and, make, and take, make choices that have the ability, capacity, and that have the, 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 I mean, everything it takes either to destroy your life or to build your life. The opportunity is there. During those times or these times, temptation times, we have the choice to resist and persevere through them or we give in to temptation and then we bear the cost of it. In these times of a man's life or a believer's life, choices are open. You have the choice to yield to what is right and you have the choice to yield to what is wrong. But every decision you make between this, there is a consequence you have to stand to bear. Amen. Persevere. They often arise as a result of our own internal desires, evil longing and passions. That's where they come from. Uh, 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 they, they, when, when you, they, 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 oh, they don't come. Only when you are, hung, you are hungry. Amen? In temptation time, you see that you are hungry, and because you are hungry, anything goes. You are hungry for that thing. And so you want to go here, top and down, to make sure that you have it. There are some people who say, I will get it at all costs. Some of the costs by which you get it are wrong in the eyes of God. But because you need that money badly, you sell yourself to that which is not right. Amen. You have arrived in this country. You know no man. A young lady, a beautiful one. Somebody walked into your life and become your friend. Started saying, I'll pay your rent free. I'll do shopping for you. Sometimes you have not even invited before you know they drop in some shoppings. They pay your rent. Everything is fine. So don't worry. Even if you are not working, I'm there for you. Then before you know, they start making some, some, some demands over you. If you are not careful, in that temptation time, you will yield to sin. 
and you bear the consequence of the person disappointing you. Hallelujah. You put your trust in that man or that woman, thinking that it is all well. Did you ask God you didn't? And so if that man or that woman disappoints you, it pains you, it hurts, but God does not have a hand in it. Say amen. Say amen. When you are hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you are under pressure to abandon God's character building program of endurance and give in to temptation. A lot of people, when they are hungry, when they are angry, when they are lonely, and thinking that it's them, it's them, they also need to make life. They leave God's character building program. They didn't know God is building their character from one level to another. For Joseph to go through the four Ps, he had to be able to uh, give himself up for God to build his character. So when he became a prime minister, he had a character, not just an attitude. He has a character that backs his attitude. So when he makes a choice, he stand by his choice. And you know where he's going because he has made a vow within himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. There was a time in the book of Genesis chapter 16 that God in his own mercy found a man called Abraham. He promised him and took him from his father's house and positioned him in his mercy and grace. So the life of Abraham would flow the way God ordained him for. For some of us, God took us from far and brought us for us to make it to here. For some of us, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. Because maybe in your family, nobody had traveled before. But God picked you and set you so your life can flow. Everything God said to Abraham came to pass. And everything God has spoken was yea and amen. There came a time in Abraham's life that his wife called him and said, Daddy, you are getting old. In fact, you are old. That's number one. Number two, I see myself, I am out of date. So, the God has made all the promises is come true. But this one thing that is left, let's help God to get it done quicker before we die. Hallelujah. So, Sarah called Abraham and said, I want you to go in with my maid. Go to my maid. Go and see my maid, Hagar. I believe Abraham didn't just yield into it. He might have hesitated for some time. But when you are under pressure from your wife, sometimes you have to listen. Other than that, you won't have peace. Food will not be there. You won't have your peace of mind to concentrate. You will be making unnecessary mistakes in life. Sometimes you, even you, you, your, your dress you have washed, before you know it's still, it's gone back to the laundry because your wife is giving you pressure. Hallelujah. Abraham came back and said, uh, anyway, you have said it. You have said it. Let us go ahead. Abraham went in, for, uh, went in to see Hagar, and Hagar conceived. That is a choice in the time of their temptation. They, they were in their temptation time. That at that time, they can either give in to, to that which is not right, or God has not approved, or they stay with what God has said. So Sarah said, we'll help God. Abraham said, let's do it. And so it happened. And before they knew, they have given birth to some Ishmael's they never expected. There are some choices you make today. You might not see the consequence. Tomorrow, it will give birth to Ishmael's you don't like to see. Hallelujah. There are some things you are involving your serving or spending your time doing now that you know God hates. The way you speak, the way you talk to your wife or your husband, the way you talk to people, and then you don't know that it's not right. You have children, they are learning. Tomorrow you give birth to what? Ishmael's in your house and the family you don't want. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For some of us, we are going through some series of things. Not because of what we have done, but because of choices our mothers and our fathers made. Wrong choices. 
So, in their temptation time, Abraham sold himself for the sake of having a child. As soon as that happened, God visited them. Ishmael is already born. The mistake has already been there. But now God come through for the promise he made for you. Because the Bible says he who has promised in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 24. He who has promised is faithful. He's faithful. He come through and now Isaac is born. Now Isaac is born. Sarah went back to Abraham and said send this, uh, this born woman. Now he called born woman. Send this born woman and that born child away. Abraham said, no chance. Abraham said, what? Well, no chance. Then the pressure started coming again. You have to let her go. You have to let them go. You see, he's fighting my son. You see, so, so, so. So Abraham has to go. This time, Abraham went to God. When Sarah proposed that decision, Abraham never went to God. But this time, when the thing became tough, Abraham cannot make that. He went to God and said, this is what my wife is saying. God said, do. Go and do it. Because you, dis- you agreed with her and you have to obey. Hallelujah. Amen. Temptation times. Beware and be careful. Be vigilant. Let your eyes shine. Down, five minutes, yes. Down on the road, his great grandson came in the sin, in the, in the person of Joseph. He went, found himself in the house of Potiphar. And then the wife one day came to her. I I don't think it was one day, several days. Tried him and said, I want to test his pulse to see if he still have that sinful nature. Uh, He's the one that preaches. He's the one that says this. He's the one that holds the Bible. He's the one that stands there and talks. I want to see if he holds the character of what you say. Many believers, we talk, but we are not the character we talk. We don't back our words with character. And so people despise your youth. Paul said to Timothy, don't let anyone despise your youth. Don't let anybody. Amen. She tried. Then Joseph remembered his great-grandfather mistake and said, me, Nalai, Nalai. I will not do this wickedness and sin against God. When, when Potiphar was talking, God was not in the, in, the, in, the, in the sin. God was not in the conversation at all. But he invited God in the conversation. I believe if Abraham had invited God in the conversation, when Sarah was talking, Sarah, he would have prompted Sarah to know that it is not right. Hallelujah. Look at the friends you walk and then play with. How do you influence their conversation? Do you bring God in your talkings? Or you just leave God aside and say, this is workplace. This is workplace. So let's do according to work matter. For you, whether you are in the workplace or at home, you are not different. You are still the child of God. That God cares. Make right decisions and right choices. Beloved, let us in the time of temptation... Let me say this, in the time of temptation, because temptation is that which the devil wants you to fall through. I said trial is what God wants you to go through. But temptation is what the devil wants you to fall through. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Remember the price to pay in time of temptation. Remember that you pay a price. Count the cost and see if you can bear If you cannot pay, if you cannot bear the cost, please, please say no to it. I was sharing, I think I shared a message about say no to something. I did. Good. Last week, oh yeah. If you cannot pay the price, if you know you don't have the money to bear the cost tomorrow, say no to it. Hallelujah. Because if you allow, the flesh will take advantage today and tomorrow the spirit will suffer. And the soul will weep. Amen. Consider the life after. After the temptation time. Consider the life after. Because if you don't consider the life after, you will not be vigilant. Consider the life after. And be vigilant. Be aware of the enemy's schemes. The enemy's devices. And the enemy's deception. Be aware. 5 Peter 5.8 says, Be sober. Be vigilant. Be, be, because your adversary, 
the devil walks like a rolling lion seeking whom he may devour. Be vigilant. Hallelujah. Let me quickly, Peter, give me five minutes so I can just finish off. The, 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 the last T is testing times. Your testing times as a believer. These are times when comfort becomes uncomfortable. Times when your comfort becomes what? Uncomfortable to you. You put on your jacket because it's cold and you feel warm. You, know, you, you, you say, I'm too hot. Yeah. So you don't know whether to remove the, the, the jacket or whatever because it's hot. And when you take it off, you are cold. Sometimes in our walk with God, Jehovah God invade our comfort zone. He invade your comfort zone. He invade my comfort zone. And the mess up that which has become comfortable for us. It can be your pleasure. It can be your leisure. You have booked the holiday to go. And God step in and God said no to it. I, I, I said, I've already paid my ticket. What should I do? Sometimes for God, it is for your good. There was a man that came to me one time in, in Feltham when we were in, in the scout hall. And he said, he came to me with a wife and they said, Pastor, uh, my husband is traveling home. If you can pray for him. And I said, before I, I, I closed my eyes to pray, the Lord spoke to me. And I said, Daddy, have you paid it? Have you already bought a ticket? He said, yes. Ah, I don't know, but I wish I can tell you to cancel this ticket. The face change. And so when the face change, I said, well, I'll pray for you, but I will pray for you because you buy your, you buy your ticket, you can't cancel, but I'll pray for you. But you have to count the cost because you have to pay the price, whatever it is. I prayed for him and I gave him counseling. When you go do A, B, C, D, please, please, because if I have the opportunity to say cancel it, I would have said, I, I would wish you cancel it. He went to Ghana. He came back crippled. And he was down for almost two years. A bedridden. We went there again. And we prayed for him. And now he's up. Walking about. He didn't even remember to come to church again. The last time I met him, I met him in a funeral. I said, hey, daddy, are you, ar are you around? So I'm, I'm, I'm around. I'll come. Amen. What am I trying to say? Beloved, in your testing time, God in, sometimes invade your pride, that which you call privacy, that which you call your comfort zone. He invades it and then he messes it up, make it become uncomfortable to you. Why? Because that is the time God wants to test where your faith stands. In your trying time, God invade there and test your faith to see where it, does, it, does it stand on your money. Or stand on your on, on, on that thing, or it stands on God. God tested to see. Amen. Or oh, I said, amen. amen. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Where your treasure is, that is the same place. Your, so God comes in to test whether your heart is with Him or your faith is in your possessions. Lot of people will come here, and when it's come to time of giving to God, giving to, to the work of God, that's where you see where your heart is and your faith stands. God wants to test your faith. He's trust, trust, he said, uh, and you lose that job. You lose that job, which you are so much committed unto it, you don't even have time for God. And the Lord comes into that comfort zone and then lose it. You lose it. God wants to see where your faith stands. Amen. Amen. You have become so addicted to that program or channel or whatever, and the Lord invade that privacy. You switch on the telly, it's not working. Amen. You are so desperate to make that call. You pick up that call. He said, no, what does he say? No signal. Sometimes thank God that he has invaded that comfort zone and mess it up. So your faith will return back to him. You hold something dear in your hand. And before you know you lose that thing. It can be your money. It can be anything in your life. But you lose that thing. God sometimes wants to test your faith. Yes, he allow, if he allows it to come, then he wants to use it to place you in another way. 
so you can have a fellowship with him. Hallelujah. Oh, I say hallelujah. When you face a challenge that requires a sacrifice, that is the time. Testing time is when you face a challenge that requires a sacrifice. It can be sacrifice of your time. It can be sacrifice of your money. It can be sacrifice of your resources. It can be sacrifice of your pleasure or your leisure and so on. Sometimes God places a demand on you. Hallelujah. You have places to go. God say, come to church. Come for prayer meeting. Do this. You, want, you are sleeping and the morning when your sleep is so sweet, Holy Ghost touches you. And then say, wake up and pray. But for some of us, even when Holy Ghost touches us, we still go back. We stretch ourselves thinking that is ordinary. Hallelujah. Why is it that you don't always wake up certain times? But sometimes in the night, one day, one day, even one day you'll be there, maybe three o'clock. Oh. You wake up. You have to do something as a believer. Remember, God is invading that sleep so he can have a fellowship with you through prayer or whatever. Don't stretch yourself and go back to bed. Spend about 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 20 minutes with God and go back to bed and see what God can do. You had that dream and then you are sleeping. Enjoy your sleep. You had that dream. You wake up, you are scared because that dream was fearful. God has invaded that dream, that, that sleep. And show you something that is behind the sin you are not seeing. So you can do something about it. Hallelujah. But for some of us, we allow the flesh in that testing time to dominate. And we lose the focus we have for God. Amen. In this way, God tests the heart to see if we are truly walking by faith or not. When you are facing the fear of the unknown. We are in the Brexit times, isn't it? We are in what? Brexit time. It is a testing time for a believer. Who do you believe? Do you believe in the economy or you believe in God? Who do you believe? In your job or you believe in the resources? He said he's, he, he, he makes, he, he said, bless me with all spiritual blessings. Do you believe in that or you believe in that which gives you physical blessing only? Amen. Do you believe in your doctor? you believe in your God. God is the ultimate. And I challenge you that you come and forge ahead in faith. Even in the midst of uncertainty. Hold on to your faith and believe in God because he's doing something you do not see. Hallelujah. Let me go back to Abraham. Now Isaac is born. Now Isaac has become a loving child. Ishmael is gone. The house is peaceful. Sarah is enjoying her marriage. A child is growing beautiful. Go to a point. God invaded Abraham comfort zone. God came into Abraham comfort zone and said, I want that your only. That only. That which you call only. You love it so much. You love it so much. That's what I demand. God places a demand on Isaac. When God has watched Ishmael to go, if God had come in when Ishmael is there, it's easy for Abraham to make a decision. Uh, God will come in and say, I need a son. Ah, I will give you one. The elder one will have to go. But God let Ishmael leave. There are certain things God does not want from you. But that is what you have given to God. He wants your only. Hallelujah. I said there are certain things God is not, is not interested in. Though he has given you. But sometimes he comes in and wants that which you love dearly. It can be your time. The time you lose, that, that, that pro, what time does that program come? And then you look, you want, you, you want to run and get home. There's a Champions League. Somebody is interested in football. I want to get home and watch. Hallelujah. But sometimes that is the time God is also placing demand. God said to Abraham, I need Isaac. Go and sacrifice Isaac for me. Abraham said, I made a mistake the other time. And I, 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 but this time, I am not going to talk to Sarah. I have to go and do it myself. If whatever happened, happens. Because my heart will have to, God, I want God to know where my heart is. It's not in my wife, it's in God. Amen. I'm not saying don't discuss things with your wife. Share things with your wife. But when God says to you, do this, it's you. It's you. Not that brother, not that sister. Not even the pastor. 
but you, God requires and places that demand. The Bible says that Abraham went and did, and God said, now I know. I tested you to see. In the book of Malachi, in the book of Malachi chapter 3, the Bible says that, and test me and see. Give me your tithe and test me and see. Abraham did, and God said, now I know that you fear God. Hallelujah. I pray for us that whatever is our comfort zone, when God invaded, may he give us the strength to yield to him. Whatever is your trial time, when you get to that period, may God empower you to hold on. Whatever is your temptation time, when it show up, may God give you the counsel to make a right choice. I pray for you that in the time of your testing, may you be found worthy and faithful before God. Remember, in your testing time, have faith in God. Remain faithful and look at the faithfulness of God and rely on it. In your testing time, look on the faithfulness of God. Look on the promises of God. Have faith in God and remain faithful. In your testing time, put God first. Put God first. In your test center, consider the life after. Consider the life after. Consider the life after. And know that he who has called you, he is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful. Somebody say faithful. And rise to your feet for me. Pray that the Lord bless you. Pray that the Lord hold your heart together. That when you go through these three, three things in life, Ah, the Holy Ghost will be with you and help you to be able.